All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ba'ashem, Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. It's Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers. Shalom to you all. Praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Remember this when it gets hard. The Lord said he would never put more on us than what we can bear. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let me start off with that. These are the type of lessons that you have to meditate on. Prophecy is the most important. But guess what? Majority of the scriptures is prophecy. This scripture is prophecy. Okay. So these are the type of lessons that. It's supposed to build you up. I love these type of lessons because when I do these type of lessons, I'm doing these lessons for me first. And Lord willing, edifying whoever listen. But these are the type of lessons that are needed because these are the things that you go through daily. <laughs> so it says there have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But the most high is faithful. It will not suffer you to be attempted above that you are able. So always remember that when you're going through something and it seemed like it's hard, it seemed like you're not about to overcome. The Lord is not a liar. Man is liar. The Lord cannot lie. The Lord is righteous. But the Lord is only dealing with those who believe in him in true sincerity. Now, for the people who do be overcome, obviously you wasn't none of his. Everybody have their time in this thing. Some of us going to endure to the end, which I hope to be a part of that. And some of us going to fall out. <laughs> That's just what it is. Some of us have fell out. Scripture said, many are called, few are chosen. But always remember, see, when you examine yourself, you know that if you are a man or a woman who really believe. So if you are a man or a woman who really believe, then this scripture should always be in your personal index. This, this scripture should always be in your heart when you're going through something. Because as it say in Lamentation 3 and 36, it said, to subvert a man out of his cause, the Lord, basically, he said, uh, damn, let me get it. Oops. To subvert a man out of his cause, the Lord something. Approve of not, okay. To subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approve of not. So that means to destroy. The Lord is not looking to destroy a man who really believe in him. Matter of fact, since I said that, then we're going to finish this scripture. Look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord it was confounded or did any abide his fear was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him. OK, but you have to call upon him in truth and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, as it say in John 4 and 24. So the most high is faithful will not suffer you to be attempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So whatever situation that you are in, the Lord will make a way for you to escape. That you will be able to bear it. Think about, I'm talking about you to you believers out there. Think about things that happened in your life where you thought that you wasn't going to make it. And I'm talking about, it could be a life life or death situation. It could be a financial situation. It could be a bug out situation. Like you feel like you're about to lose your damn mind. But guess what? In that day, you got so flustered, flabbergasted to the point that you're about to lose your mind. You got through that day. That next day that you woke up, this is what happened. For his anger endured but a moment in his favor is life. Weeping may adore for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. See, now, you know, it's like it's a refreshing. You wake up, you pray to the Lord. And, and as soon as you pray to the Lord, you got to be thankful. That means that the Lord got you through that day. He didn't take he ain't take the spirit away from you. All right. But now oh, it's lucky you had to burp. But now. You in your right mind. You got over that situation. 
And the scripture talks about, you know, how the inward man renew itself day by day. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. So, you know, we, we, we go through things, man. That's part of the straight gate. But the Lord will get you through, and I am a testament of that. So, you know, matter of fact, there's another one. And this is going to be a quick video. This is just a, a spiritual motivator, Lord willing. It said, a patient man will tear. That means cry. A patient man will tear for a time, and afterward, joy shall spring unto him. You want to know what the joy really is? You overcame the situation. And every time you overcome a situation, you get stronger. All of this is building your endurance for the great and dreadful day that's coming. See, you go through these things and it's building up your spiritual endurance. It's building up your faith. So when now, when all hell breaks loose, you're like, I don't care, man. I know the Lord going to get me through this. I, I'm not bowing down to nothing. I know the Lord going to get me through this. That is the mindset that you got to have. Because if you don't have that, the scripture talks about woe unto him. Who lost patience? What would you do when the Lord should visit you? That's in Ecclesiasticus 2 and 12. All right? And it, and it said, woe to him that, um, matter of fact, let me get it. I might just do 2 and 12 and 13 together. See what it says. Yeah. Woe be to the fearful hearts and fey hands and the sinner that go both ways. That means a person who have his foot in the truth and his foot in the world. Who have his mind in the world, have his mind on the Lord. That's what you call lukewarm. And the Lord said he's going to spew you out of his mouth. And it said, woe to him that is faint hearted for he believe him not. Therefore, he should not be defended. So this is so even in the time of you going through something. Man, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm about to lose my fucking mind, man. It's some bullshit. You know, I'm tired of this shit. You got to always remember that the Lord said he ain't going to put you. Hey, 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 and I'm going to keep it real, too. When you're going through those things, you are not your best self. It's not no man on the earth that when he go through something that he just, yeah, you know what? I know I'm supposed to go through this. The flesh react first and then the spirit settle you down. OK, we are corrupted creatures. That's why we have to be changed. So the Lord, he tells us about, you know, blesses he who is chastened of the Lord. But in that time that you're going through something, this is the way that you feel. Because you got a lot of people who, who act like they um they so righteous. You're not righteous, okay? So it says, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous, okay? No chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. So when you're going through something, the grievousness set in before the spirit settle you down. You're going through things. Our forefather Job, in chapter 3, that whole chapter, he was telling the Lord, why didn't you just kill me? Why couldn't I be a stalemate? Uh, a stalemate? I wish I was never born. King David said it. Apostle Paul said it. He said to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. King David said he wished he was a bird that he could just fly away. So all, so a lot of great men always wanted to be with the Lord. I'd rather die than to be down here going through this bullshit. Matter of fact, even King Solomon said this in Ecclesiastes. But the whole point is that the Lord said, uh, I think it's three. Is it three? Yeah. So it says, if a man beget a hundred children and live many years, so many that the day of his years be many and his soul shall not be filled with good. And also that he have no burial. I say that an untimely birth is better than he. So death is better than living a life full of sorrow. So the point of this video is that understanding that the Lord is never going to put more on you if you are his, of course. And if you're still here, think about the things that you've been. Here's the thing. You go through something. You might have you overcame something last year that was real major. Then you're going through something this year. And then you forget what the Lord has brought you through. Don't be forgetful. Okay? But here's the thing, though. Going back to the point that I'm making with the flesh. In Ecclesiasticus, I got to come back to this now. Did I even finish the last scripture? Hey, that's the spirit, man. 
So it says, in the day of prosperity, there is forgiveness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. So it's, it's listen, it's the flesh, man. So you might have came, overcame something major last year. You're going through something this year. And then you forget what the Lord have done. And you start being bugged out in your mind. You start going crazy. You got to remember, the Lord said he'll never put more in you than you can bear. So let's read verse 4 now. For he cometh in with vanity and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Okay. Moreover, he have not seen the sun nor known anything. This have more rest than the other. So a person who, you know, who life is just, you know, just bugged out, poor on the street, diseased, you know, pain all over your body, afflicted in your mind. It's better for you to never see the light of day. So it'll say, yeah, though he live a thousand years twice told yet, have he seen no good? Do not all go to one place because we all go back to the spirit world. All right. So the point that I read the scripture is because, you know, even King Solomon is telling you, like, listen, it's better for you to never see the light of day than to live your life in, um, you know, turmoil all the time. But but let's continue, you know, so. What is that? Matter of fact, let me see if I read. Did I finish? Oh, yeah. So let me now no chastening uh, for the present seem to be joys, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So when you go through the chastisement and you come out of the chastisement, it build up your righteousness because now. It makes you stronger. This is a thing of faith. It builds up your faith. This is a thing of adorns. It builds up your adorns. Now, when you're going through something else, now you're able to settle your spirit. The Lord talks about being able to control your spirit in Proverbs 25 and 28. You know, a man who is able to rule his own spirit is, is better than a man with weapons of war. I think I, I think I said that right. Let's see. Oops. Damn it. <clears throat> he that have no rule over his own spirit. Okay, so I said it wrong. I, I, I combined the two scriptures together. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. And when you a city broken down without walls, anybody can infiltrate you. So in, in the spiritual sense, demons could just have a field day, a feast on your mind when you're not able to rule your own spirit. You got to always constantly talk to the Lord. Uh, Luke 18 and one said a man ought to always pray and faint not. So you have to understand that the Lord will never put more on you than you could bear. But also that comes with the examining. You should know if you really about this thing. And that's why I've been seeing scripture. I mean, I've been seeing brothers making videos about counting the cost lately because we heading into that time where we've been preaching about the devil coming down with great wrath. We about to be slandered. We about to be public enemy number one to the whole world. They gonna make us seem like we the problems, but we don't have no problem to change rent prices, gas prices, food prices. We don't have no power in the political realm, but they gonna somehow they gonna make it seem like we the problem. So just imagine that it's gonna get real unfair out here. But all the things that you've been going through in your life, the times you've been in the truth, the Lord been building you up, man. The Lord been building you up. It said, love your own soul and comfort your heart. Remove sorrow from far from you for sorrow have killed many and there is no profit therein. So it's no point to be moping around. We have the knowledge of Yahweh Shai. Rejoice more than being sad. Of course, you're going to be sad some days. But I'm talking about your natural estate. You should wake up happy after you pray to the Lord because. You know the Lord and everybody don't have that access to the Lord. All right. So to end it on this. So these are the things that we go through. But it said for for of heaviness come of death and the heaviness of the heart break of strength. In affliction also sorrow remaineth in the life of the poor is the curse of the heart. Most of us, you know, don't do that well, but the Lord get us through. And guess what? That's the curse of the heart because you're always thinking about, you know, one thing that I realized, even though you are content, 
we all want more now. You know, it would make, um, you know, our life a little bit more comfortable, but that's not the will of the Lord. So now you have that curse of the heart when you don't have what you need. You know, well, matter of fact, when you don't have what you want sometimes, you know, most of the time shit, you know, you'd be like, damn, man, I, when can I have something? Hey, the Lord said you're going to have everlasting life if you continue to be patient and wait on me. So it says, take no heaviness to heart, drive it away. Remember the last end. So that's what gets you through, man. So whatever you're going through, you know, pray for the Lord to get you through it. And, and, and pray, period. Pray without season, as the scripture says. You know, so pray for strength to endure to the end. And all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and Shalom.